All right, folks at home, welcome back to Root TV tonight. It is January the 18th, I think. Yeah, 18th. Uh, happy birthday to my mom, whose uh, birthday was yesterday. So happy birthday, mom. Today on the show, we have a very special guest. A very special guest. It's going to be a very unique show. Very unique show for people. Uh, but before... All right, so Natalie, I, I, I've been trying to write these elaborate intros to my guests uh, lately. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they hit. Sometimes they miss. I I'm, I hope this this hits. Do you want to? Do you want to? Okay. Do you want to hear what I wrote for you? Let's hear it. All right. All right. Here it is. <clears throat> my throat. Drink out of my Krampus mug. I'm at. <laughs> Gives me inspiration. Okay. So, folks at home, we have today on the show the world's best. And badass, vegan blogger, author, animal loving, Garfield worshiping, straight edge living, hardcore listening, punk rock, Chicago icon, Enid, <laughs> Enid Coleslaw herself. I don't know about that, but close. <laughs> uh, the one and only Natalie Slater of Bake and Destroy. Give it up. How's, how's all that? Right. I did all right. I did okay. That was incredible. <laughs> Fuck, I... I I forgot. I, I son of a bitch. I left something out. Uh, AKA the female Lou Ferrigno, Lupo Vegano. So, so female. Yeah. Fe yeah. So yeah, I uh, <laughs> could be. I mean, you could. Yeah, Lupo Lupo Ferrigno might be here, but but <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> Natalie, thanks so much for coming on the show. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm good. Yeah. How are you doing? Uh, as good as I could be being, uh, you know, uh, soon to be 42 year old man, uh, with joint pain, but I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing well. Listen, you're yeah. talking to a 43 year old lady. So, well, I mean, Way ahead of you, buddy. yeah, it's, um, <laughs> I know I have a lot of people watching at home today who don't know who you are and I don't want this podcast. I don't want this show to be the, the life story. Of Natalie Slater, but I want to give a just a brief, like Cliff Notes version for people who don't have any idea of who you are. Um, mm -hmm. Could you like give me a little bit of a background uh, in a short time span? Because I got some stuff to tell you, very important. So, Natalie, go tell me about yourself. Sure. Um, well, most people who do know me know me as a vegan cookbook author and blogger. I've been writing BaconDestroy.com for 17 years now, almost. Um, and my book came out in 2013. So in vegan years, it's <laughs> like a, it's like a ancient scroll of veganism now. <laughs> um, some other folks might know me from maybe having seen me on the WWE CM Punk biography. Um, and yeah, I think those are kind of the two two reasons why anybody might know who the hell I am. But other than that, I am I live in Chicago and, yeah. you know, I work in, in vegan food and that's who I am and what I do. So one of the reasons I wanted uh, Natalie on the show is I, I, a few people might know, maybe some close friends of mine have known. I've been trying over the past, God, I want to say year or so, probably over a year. I know my cousin Tyler knows, brother. I've been trying a lot of different vegan foods because honestly, I want to, as a 42, uh, soon to be 42 year old man, to one day aspire to be what natalie slater is and and uh, and you know it's took taken me this long uh and it's kind of mind-boggling because i probably i don't think there's a human on the planet who loves animals more than i do maybe maybe equally but um it's something that i i'd, I'd always aspire to do and, and and honestly over the past year when i've been trying these different foods in philadelphia love the shit out of them and they don't make me feel like crap afterwards so natalie how long have you i, I can't remember i know you maybe mentioned it uh on social media but how long have you yourself been vegan um i it's easy for me to keep track actually because i became vegan 
the year 2000. So it's a nice okay. round number. Okay. Okay. I can, okay. I can do easy math. <laughs> well, that's what one of the things I was going to tell you is because I'm pretty sure if my my research is correct, we both come from Italian families with people shoving meat like meatballs and sausage and peppers down our like you know <laughs> like like nonstop. So was there when 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 that happened in 2000? Was there like a little bit of shock and like oh you don't you don't want you don't want this what what's your this really like I don't know or were yeah. your, was your was your family kind of cool with it? Um, I think. There was like a generation gap with how yeah. how um how much it was understood. Like my grandparents yeah. didn't understand at all what I was doing or why. Mm -hmm. And even this many years in, my grandma she accepts it. I won't right. say she understands it. Um, but she still doesn't quite like she'll she'll say things to me like you can have some of this. You eat lamb, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm vegan, except I eat lamb. It's the one thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, it's it's getting easier and easier because more members of my family have become vegan or vegetarian over the years. So now, yeah. you know, I've got a vegan cousin. I have a vegan sister-in-law. My mom's a vegetarian. So it's like, yeah. The more of us there are, the more everybody kind of just accepts it. I, I did luck out that my mom, you know, my whole life, my mom was like a healthy person, a healthy and active person. So right. we really didn't eat. We ate meat for sure, but we weren't like the kind of family that it was like a big obsession. Like we mm -hmm. actually ate mostly like chicken and fish and kind of like the healthier meats, you know? So yeah. it wasn't that big of a deal. She didn't take it personally at all. She just kind of was like, uh, okay, but you have to cook your own food. Like that was, <laughs> that right, was that right, right. conversation. Um, so I'm lucky because I do know, I know people from all different cultural backgrounds that, not only, you know, did their families feel kind of betrayed, but they also felt like, am I going to have to give up part of who I am now because yeah. I'm not being, I can't eat my family foods and the things that I grew up on. And, and like, I mean, luckily the age we're in now, it's like, you can veganize anything. There's yeah. really no, like no limit anymore. Um, so that's amazing. But I, I know it's, it's more of a struggle for other people than it was for me. I don't really understand the negative connotation when you tell somebody that, I mean, it's like, I, I can, I can vividly remember telling somebody I went to tattooed moms in Philly on South street, shout out to my favorite spot. And I had a, mm -hmm. um, a vegan, uh, burger, which was absolutely, that's my go-to when I go there. My cousin Tyler loves the vegan, uh, uh, steak cheesesteak um delicious but there's always like when i when i tell people that there's always like well why did you do that why don't you just i don't i don't understand why don't and what what do you think the negative emotions is because the, the negative connotation to that i feel like people feel like oh wait you're doing that am i doing something wrong by do it by doing not right, right there I, yeah, I think that's it's like a, it's like a subconscious thing where it's like oh yeah you're vegan you're eating vegan food yeah, I don't. So you're so I'm I'm feeling subconsciously like a piece of shit. Is that what where the negative <laughs> negativity comes from? Because I think yeah, honestly, what, yeah, I think a ton of it is projection and yeah. like uh this just perceived judgment that you're not necessarily putting out in the world. I I had a little bit of experience with that, like being straight edge before. Yeah you know, before I ever became interested in veganism, like yeah. even at a young age, when people hear that, they're like, they take what you're doing as a reflection of like what you think of them. Yeah. And then with veganism, I mean, it's a hundred percent of the time, anybody who's ever come at me negatively about it, it's all about what they assume I think about them. Yeah. And and I know this to be true because the people, even people who don't have a negative reaction to it, the other reaction is an apologetic one. Mm -hmm. You know, like people will say, oh, that's really great. Yeah, I wish I could do that. You know, I only eat a little bit of meat. Like, I don't really eat that much dairy. You know, like mm -hmm. they like want to like almost apologize. And it's like, I 
didn't ask for any of this. Like, I'm just yeah. you know, like, this is only like what I do. Like, you're a completely different person than me. But yeah, I think you're right. That is where, you know, people get really insecure because they think that what you're, what you're doing and with the journey you're on, like somehow reflects on them. Yeah. It's, it's, it's strange the reactions that it gets. And I, and like I said, I haven't totally uh, committed to that yet, but I've even felt, I've felt that from just telling people I had a, a vegan burger like once I'm like, Whoa, why did you, why did you eat that? I'm like, Oh, geez. Okay. Well, I don't know. I want to, <laughs> I want to try something and I would rather not feel like shit afterward. I don't think there's ever, I don't think there's ever been a human being in history who has eaten a steak or a Big Mac and has felt awesome afterwards. <laughs> they've, usually, they've, they've usually, I think nine times, well, no, no. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to say 10 times out of 10, you feel like garbage after. So yeah, I mean, if you want to break it down to that, I, the, the main issue aside, which is bug and love animals, and I love more than most people, but um, that, uh, you know, it's just, it's easy to explain to people, but going yeah. off, of, but going off of that though, um, I did say, you know, I, I am not vegan, but for somebody like me watching right now and fuck myself, um, what do you suggest? I mean, this is something, this is one of the things I, I told you about in the initial email. How do you suggest someone like me go about this do you suggest someone do it cold turkey do you think you should pardon the pun do you think someone should uh uh do it in stages like what do you what is your advice to someone who is interested in in, in potentially doing that but doesn't know how to go about it yeah that's a good question well i mean first of all um wanting to wanting to become vegan or yeah. vegetarian either yeah. one is the biggest and hardest step and the one that most people don't take most people it doesn't cross their mind i mm -hmm. want to make this huge change in my life so the fact that you're even thinking about it yeah is like you've taken an enormous leap into what it takes and to answer your question directly i always advise people to baby step into it you right. know, whether, and depending on, you know, who you are and what you eat like and how much you cook. And like, there are a lot of different variables on how much you need to baby step, but I don't think there's a person in the world who I would say, just go cold Turkey, go from eating yeah. everything to excluding like tons of stuff that you're used to and trying right. all these new foods. Like I really wouldn't suggest that to anybody. Right. The way I did it was, you know, I, uh, I went vegetarian first and even that I kind of, you know, I first decided like, Oh, I, I couldn't eat another, I couldn't eat a pig. Pigs are the coolest. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to eat a pig. Stopped eating pork. A couple days later, like, uh, maybe I don't want to eat a cow. You know, and I just like kind of kept going through it until like a few weeks in, I was like, all right, no, no animals, no fish. Like mm -hmm. I'm done. And then, um, yeah. And then after that, I would say like, there's so many things out there to try now that you almost want to do them one at a time, especially with cheese. I know that's the hard thing for most people. Yeah. Um, and vegan cheese has come a long way. Trust me, it was straight disgusting. Like when I was first yeah. becoming vegan, it was pretty disgusting. And I just didn't eat it. I just quit eating it all together. And I just ate other things instead. But um you're going to need to try a lot of stuff. There's, yeah. I can't tell you that the first, you know, alternative mozzarella you try is going to be a winner. You're going to have to kiss a few frogs, you know, and right. most people have tried a non-dairy milk at this time. So you might already know what you like. That might be yeah. easier, but I, I always suggest just kind of taking it one thing at a time. Um, there's no, you don't have a, a deadline you're up against. Like nobody has to know, you know, like what stage you're in or whatever, it's totally on you. So don't feel like you need to go from, you know, being an omnivore to like overnight being a perfect vegan. I yeah. still mess up. Like I still will have something in my mouth and like look at the ingredients and be like- Realize after the fact, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, so it's like, 
there's no rush. There's no pressure. The, the desire to do it is the battle I would say. Yeah. And I, and I think that's a, that's a pretty good strategy. I mean, one of the things that I've cut out, uh, not many people know this. I don't think anybody knows this as, uh, anything from a pig. I haven't had anything, anything for a long ass time. And I mm -hmm. feel like, and, and not, not to, not to prioritize animals over different animals. I mean, uh, but, um, that's what I've tried. That's my, in my mental, you know, weighted way of, I've been doing it is <laughs> it sounds kind of gross, but like one animal at a time, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, if I, if I cut out, you know, I haven't had ham, you know, in ages and all that's, you know, I've been to come pork. I never had that, but I feel like, you know what? Here's something funny. I just realized there was a, here's another, I have a, I have a woman that followed me on Instagram and I followed her back and I just realized she was, and more power to her for, for trying to do what she's doing, but she was selling, um, she had her own per personal Instagram and she turned it into like a business Instagram. And what she was selling was these, uh, uh, sh uh, seasonings based on bacon, um, I guess bacon byproduct or something. You you, you sprinkle it on your thing, your steak, and you cook it, whatever. And mm -hmm. the re one of the reasons I realized I'm like God, I think I'm really cut out to p potentially do this one day is like it just made me sick to my stomach. And like I'm looking at the I'm looking at the picture. And, and no offense to her if she's watching this, I'm sorry, but I'm looking at the picture and they, they put a they put like a cartoon pig on the on the on the on the ground up picture of it. I mean, really, you have to you have to like I don't know. I'm I'm just you you probably honestly, Natalie, you'd be probably you're probably thinking to yourself, why the fuck isn't Rue a vegan? I've been listening to like, you know, for years. I mean, I'm gonna show something. You're the only person who's gonna know what I'm gonna hold up right now. Okay, how the fuck? How the fuck do they listen to this in high school? And I'm not vegan. Like, look at that. You know what this is? Come on now. Yeah, seriously, of course. Seriously, seriously. I'm, seriously. I'm gonna go see them in March. <laughs> oh, are you? Okay. Well, yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> for folks at home who don't know, this is an Earth Crisis CD uh, that I had in 1997 in high school, and it's really. I think it goes back to what I said initially. Um, and I think it it really does, you know, it's just, I don't want to say tradition, but like when you, when you come from something that's so ingrained in your culture, it's very hard to break from it. And I think that's what has been a problem for not only me, but a lot of people. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, is what it is. But uh, yeah. I, I mean, I've, you know, you've been, God, let me see, 2000s, so how many years has that been? 20 23, 23 years. So more power to you, Natalie. That's awesome. Respect, mad respect for that. I mean, it's, but it's really, you I'm know, very you, stubborn. <laughs> I mean, but this, some of the, some of the stuff you show on your Instagram and, uh, you know, on your blog and everything, like, I mean, like, what did you fucking, uh, the, 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 the like, there's the, the vegan lasagna dip. Like, who the hell wouldn't, who the hell wouldn't like that? It's like, you, people have this negative negative thought in their head is like okay if i do that i'm just gonna eat shit for the rest of my life i'm not gonna like it why would i do that i care about animals but i don't want to eat garbage for that it's really not garbage i <laughs> see my opinion from the stuff i've tasted from places i like it better and i don't feel like crap afterwards so yeah. um it really isn't bad food i mean i think you can i mean back in the day you know depending yeah. on what kind of food you like, it could have been a bit of a sacrifice. Like yeah. for me, I did, I did have to readjust and say like, okay, uh, back then bur my burger choices were like Dr. Prager's and Boca burgers. So like these <laughs> yes. are not as good as my dad's <laughs> yeah. burgers, but right, right, right. I, I love animals yeah. too much to give up on this. And so yeah. I'm just going to get used to it. You know, I got used to it and like, you know, the same is true for everything. Like back then, um, Chofudi cuties were like the ice cream of choice for vegans. And I, right. I still will crush a box of Chofudi cuties. They're still yeah. good to this day. But, you know, I was like, okay, this isn't like 
as good as, you know, some of the ice cream that I like better, but it's yeah. good enough. Like it's fine, you know? And so I did, I, I made some compromises and I got mm -hmm. used to things and my taste changed, but like now, I mean, I'm going to say it a million times in this conversation, but there are, there's just good stuff out there. Like yeah. there's a burger for everyone, no matter what you like, there's one for you. There's look at like, just go to the grocery store and look at all the non-dairy ice creams. You're yeah. going to find something you like in there. So yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, the compromises are few and far between these days. And the, the part with your family and your culture, it, it's tough and I'm not going to pretend like it's not, but they get used to it. You find ways to fit in. Like, you know, yeah. for a long time, I would just bring tons of food with me to family gatherings. Like I'd veganize my mom's recipe. My grandma helped me veganize her spaghetti sauce for my cookbook. Like yeah. I would just bring my own stuff so I could still be eating what everybody was eating and fit in. And like over the years, people started trying things. And like now, you know, my sister hosts a vegan Thanksgiving at her non-vegan home because all her kids like it. My mom, like everybody's cool with it. So it just takes time and, you know, but it's, it doesn't have to be that hard. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and one thing you bring up and we both have been bringing up is family. And I had a question for you. Um, was, you know, I'm single right now, but I know you're married with Tony uh, to, to, to Tony, was Tony, uh, you, was Tony vegan when you guys met or did he kind of convert to that after the fact? Um, I was yeah, just Tony, about. Tony and I have, uh, extremely similar backgrounds. I think okay. that's why, you know, we've been together yeah. for 20 years. <laughs> well, um, that, that definitely helps when you're on the same page, you know? Yeah. He's, yeah. you know, he's, it, you know, he came up on hardcore, he's straight yeah. edge, like yeah. he, he did all the same stuff I did, like went to shows at Krishna temples <laughs> and, you know, like we liked all the same like youth crew bands. And, yeah. and so that made it easy. Cause I, before him, I definitely, you know, there weren't enough vegans for me to only date vegan guys or even vegetarian guys. And so, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it was like, it's just, I mean, I don't, I would never exclude somebody from my life for not being exactly like me. So yeah, right. that wasn't like a requirement, but it definitely made things tough. Like when we traveled, like, yeah. I'm, you know, like no one's thinking of me, like, where am I going to eat when we're traveling or, you know, just stuff like that. So um, it, it definitely makes it easier if you can find a vegan partner, <laughs> but yeah, if sure. not, like somebody that's open to it or like, is is cool with like you know you pick a restaurant this weekend i'll pick one next weekend like you know as long as you don't end up with somebody who's just like gonna find yeah. sabotage you or not i don't know how you. anybody could like be with someone who doesn't like animals that's what i was I, I i i could i don't know that that's my number one i don't care if you're the bees knees i sound like my grandpa uh but <laughs> if you don't like animal, if, if you don't respect or love animals i can't work with like no sorry yeah hard pass i mean so. compassion for animals yeah. is you know a pretty like yeah i would say it's, it's pretty standard like you have you if you're not compassionate about animals like that says a lot I mm -hmm. just said a lot about not judging other people but that is one thing that's like <laughs> i don't i don't know how anybody could like animals are just are innocent so i don't like you know not i it's i hate to i hate to lump all you know i hate to like sing single out one type of animal because they all are deserving of compassion and empathy and I, honestly my opinion i i i uh posted this was it yesterday or the day before you know if you don't i i believe if you don't have empathy for animals you don't have empathy at all um, but how the fuck do people don't like dogs? What, what are, and where are these people? <laughs> and what, what level of hell are they from? Like, I, I, I wanted to ask you this, like, I, I don't talk enough about this and I feel like you're the right person to ask unless I, I get it. If maybe you had some trauma growing up and you got bit or sure. something, I, I got it. I got it. But 
otherwise, how the hell could you not like to? I don't know. I don't. I just. Are you? Do you think they're like? Do you think they're aliens or robot robots or like? <laughs> I don't know. Uh. Well, what I mean. You? There's different classes, right? Because there's cat people. Yeah, I'm both. Who don't really like dogs, and it's like I don't get it, but okay, mm. I you're a cat person, like that's you know you've got something, yeah, you know? right. yeah, yeah. But people who don't like pet any kind of domesticated animal is, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I I, I don't know how. To, can you can you sit, like if you knew that and you were sitting in a room with someone, could you relate to them at all? Like as a, no. on a personal level, it's a hard no. no for me. It's a hard no for me. I mean, when, I, when Tony and I first started dating, I found out that he'd never had a pet. Oh, well. Um, it, it wasn't out of any kind of like weird, you know, it was just, just a never did. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Just his parents couldn't like, they just couldn't have a pet. But, um, yeah. I, even that I was like, you've never like shared your life with an animal. <laughs> like, that's so weird but i mean obviously now we have two dogs that are currently both sleeping on top of him so he's yeah. he's come a long way but yeah i don't know i don't i don't know i don't meet a lot of people who don't like dogs but i think that i might um you know that might be on purpose like i'm i might like put something out in the universe that's like hey if you don't like dogs don't tell me about it <laughs> yeah i i don't like to judge people but um I do there. Sorry, kill me. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, um, you just brought up Flapjack. What, he was initial, um, initially, you were just like fostering and then ended up keeping, right? I think or something. Well, yeah. I I mean, we joke around that I'm the only one who didn't know that we were keeping Flapjack. Um, okay. Because okay. basically what happened was my husband was going to work, was driving to work. Yeah. There was a lot of construction. He had to take a detour that sent him down an alley that he doesn't, he never drives down. So he's driving yeah. down this alley and he sees what looks like a really sick little emaciated squirrel walk out in, into the alley Yeah, and he stopped. So he didn't hit it. And the more he looked at it, the more he realized like that is a very, oh, yeah. a dog in very bad shape. So he got out and the dog like ran under a car and hid from him. So he walked over and put his hand under her and was like, come here, you know, like just trying to get the dog out and out walked Flapjack, who at the time was uh, two pounds and totally like matted and over like overgrown hair and just like a total mess. And yeah. he he picked her up and put her in the car and got a good look at her and like realized that her whole bottom jaw was just hanging off and um, was in bad shape. And yeah. he called me just literally sobbing about it, just hysterically crying. Like this little dog is going to die. Like I, I don't know what to do. And um, luckily we both work for a vegan brand. And so like everybody there, including our bosses are super compassionate and love dogs. And so mm -hmm. everybody just kind of sprung into action. Um, the founder and vice president had Tony bring Flapjack over to their house so that the vice president could take her to the emergency vet and get her checked out and everything. So, Long story short, uh, after a, che a checkup and um, a grooming, um, she ended up at our house and just, um, I kind of thought like, we'll get her healthy. You know, we, we raised money and we started paying for her to get dewormed and get medical treatment and x-rays on her face and stuff like that. And, um, a few weeks in, like I, there was no way I could have let her go either, but yeah. like, um, when we talk about it now, I'm, I get informed by Tony that the, the minute he picked her up, there was no way she was going <laughs> to live with anybody but us. So <laughs> I was late to the party there, but yeah, we, we've had her, um, he found her in, the summer of 2019 and yeah. she's doing great. She's, you know, she weighs like 10 pounds. Um, she's like a super feisty little yeah. dog. He and my other dog tolerate each other, but they're good. You know, they're good. 
Um, and yeah, she's awesome now. And she's like, uh, just the toughest little creature. Like, I can't believe that she survived all that. Um, yeah. yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I saw that video of, uh, I think you posted it yesterday or a couple of days ago. You have him playing around, Tony playing around with her, with him on the bed or something. Yeah. That, was, that was funny, but, uh, props to you guys for doing that. I, I, I would, it's this is kind of a shitty thing to say, but one of the reasons why I, well, first of all, I have three cats and a, and a, and a dog, so it's tough. But one of the reasons I don't foster is because I, there's no way, like once you're in my, <laughs> once you're in this yeah. house there, you're not leaving. I just know my, I know myself. You're not, you're, there's no way, there's no way you're leaving. I'd be, I'd be, losing my fucking mind there's no you way you have like 30 dogs <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and i can't have I, just, I would have to quit yeah. my job quit my job and and be broke no, so. i have so much respect for fosters now yeah. just because it's a it's a really tough that's a tough job to just care for animals that are like the most in need and then to be able to mm. let them go on to a you know their permanent family like that would be that would be super tough. And I, obviously I would also be bad at that because now I have two dogs. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be super tough. I don't know how people do, but more power to people who do do it. Uh, shout out to, uh, there's Paul's in Philly, uh, Paul's in Philly, Paul's Chicago too, of course. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, those, those, those people are saints and, uh, and, uh, mad respect for them. But, uh, I want to change the subject shift the gears natalie uh okay. because we have a, we have a mutual love of a of a certain movie i'm gonna hold this up for you you might you might get slightly jealous i don't know maybe i i met this human being uh last march in cherry hill new jersey and uh she was super sweet and and so nice to me and i think you might know what movie this is from we'll find out yeah. in a second we might know what movie this is from. Oh, did you meet <laughs> Thora Birch? Yes, I met Thora <laughs> Birch. And if you get folks at home, if you can read that, it says, Rue, you're the opposite of everything I truly hate. XOXO nice. Thora Birch. So, <laughs> yeah. So, Natalie and I love uh, the movie slash comic book, you know, by Daniel Klaus, Ghost World. Um, I, it's, I've gone on record by saying it's my favorite movie. I want to talk a little bit about it. Uh, can you tell us why? You dig the movie so much, and what 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 are your what are your thoughts of Ghost World? Because I don't meet too many people who love the movie just like I do. So yeah, um, that movie just like reached inside me and touched, like just touched my heart and soul. Like after I saw, I saw it in the theater, and I was so affected by it i just like stayed in my room for the whole next day <laughs> day yeah. yeah uh i think i mean i'm actually super interested to hear what what you know what about it you love so much because for me i'd never seen you know the the teenage girl experience like portrayed so realistically and mm -hmm. female characters just like and a female friendship really shown so well and so realistically, especially at the time when it came out. Like yeah. e even now, I don't really think there. I I couldn't think of another movie that has done as good of or better of a job of either of those things. But um, and the and to be written by a man is like mind blowing too. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just I related so much to really. I mean both characters but like just being sort of this like all at once like overachiever and slacker yeah. <laughs> and you know just kind of feeling like nobody understands you and no like everybody's giving you a hard time and everything you do is you you're just fucking up every time you try to do anything and yeah um I related to that so much. I just like couldn't I I couldn't believe what that I was seeing it like in front of my face. And I rewatch it, I mean it at least once a year, like sometimes mm -hmm. more if I can take it, but it still makes me cry every time. Yeah. And I've seen it probably 50 times now and it just like 
when she walks in to Seymour's apartment and says she just needs somebody to be nice to her for like five minutes and then he'll yeah. she'll leave him alone. It's like, I feel like that all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I say those words out loud all the time, like to Tony, where I'm like, can you just, not that he's ever not nice, but like, hey, can you just coddle me for like five mm -hmm. minutes because everything <laughs> sucks and I just need someone to just be nice and not ruin my day um so yeah I don't know I it just like it was like an emotional experience for me I really I love that movie so much what about you it took me it took me about the second viewing to really sink in because initially the reason why I saw it and I didn't see it in theaters I got it uh, on DVD, probably a year, a year, maybe less than a year after that, because I really love Steve Buscemi and he was my, you know, I, I just, anything Steve Buscemi does is, 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 I just love, but I ended up loving the movie for different reasons. Um, you know, after I saw it and like you, I would say upwards of 50 or 60 times and at least once a year I watch it. And one of the weird things about it is that people say, including you, because you just said it. Um, I don't think, in my opinion, it, and you know what? I shouldn't say I don't think. I don't think it's just relevant to teenage girls' experience growing up. I think it's a microcosm of a lot of people who are outcasts uh, growing up. And for me, I related to, well, not only Seymour, Enid, Enid and Seymour are kind of similar in the sense that they are both outcasts um, and kids kind of can't find their place in the world. And I just related it. I just related to, I mean, even though I am a guy, I related to Enid's ongoing struggle of not only fitting in and everything going wrong, but people always in life, nothing really ever stays the same and no one ever really uh, is there all the time and it was just like that scene if you notice um on the park bench with the old man where he's, you know mm -hmm. she she vocalizes why she likes him so much is because everyone around her is leaving everything around her is changing yet he is always there you know and funny enough as they wrote it you know he in the end did get did actually leave uh, right. So I I I found it to be touching for the similar for similar reasons, um, you know I was always I was an outcast in high school, uh, you know young adult life I've always felt certain similar feelings as Enid, uh, growing up a punk rock kid and kind of just not finding my way and people in and out of your life constantly, um, that it was it was a it was a it really uh, touched home with me, and I felt that it was something. Uh, how can I explain it? It's just like it's like a micro. I, I used that word before, but it's almost the movie itself. For me, anyway, I can't speak for anybody else watching this, but for me, it's almost like a microcosm of young adult life. I'm 42. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm almost four, be 42 in March. But for my young adult life, that's what I that's what I felt like. Despite the fact that I am not, <laughs> I'm not a female, but I felt sure. like that. I felt the same way you did. Okay, so yeah. that's that's why I love it so much. On top of that, I think it's I love dark humor and it's hilarious and in yeah. certain as certain aspects. Anyway, <laughs> but um. Yeah, so I think that's a good point. I guess I yeah. hadn't thought about it that um you could still watch the movie as an outcast yeah. and it, like your gender identity doesn't necessarily like yeah. mean anything. I think I think for me the reason I did bring that in is just because um like female friendships are for some reason really hard for Hollywood to capture it's either like yeah. it's like always like one extreme mm -hmm. or another it's either just Generic. like they're just like backstabbing like talking yeah. behind each other's backs or it's just or it's just like this Thelma and Louise just like I would die for you you're perfect everything you do is amazing I love you and it's right. like no like Ugh. we're people it's mm -hmm. complicated like it you know, you can be, I get disappointed 
in my friends. Um, I support them no matter what they, you know, no matter what, like I'm there for them, but I get disappointed when they make bad choices. I get mad at them when I feel like they don't do the same for me, you know, that I'm doing for them or like, we're, yeah. we're complicated. It's not, it's not like, so the two ways that it always gets depicted. So I thought that friendship was like really interesting and really realistic. And you do, that's an age where no matter who you are, wh wh however you identify, like yeah. you do start to kind of grow away from some of your friends. And that can be really heartbreaking. Like somebody that's been in your life since you were 12. And then all of a sudden you're adults and you're kind of like, I don't really know you, or I don't, we don't have the same goals anymore. And you do, you grow apart and those people leave your life and it can be, it's, it's really hard that mm -hmm. that age is like, yeah, it's so hard. So I, I think seeing it like so beautifully depicted and with so much humor and so many people that I just love watching. Like I also love Steve Oshimi and like, yeah. I love, um, you know, this is a unique role for Thora Birch, but I, I thought she was incredible. Like, I mean, I could give her take Scarlett Johansson, like for the rest <laughs> of her career, really. Yeah, but I, I she really... was amazing in Ghost World. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I haven't really followed much of her other work but that's yeah. neither neither here nor there so i think most people that that are fans of her work probably have never even seen ghost world and they'd probably think mm -hmm. it's like really weird and boring if they did yeah but, you're right about that but yeah yeah, yeah but, i i i love ghost world i i think everybody should watch well i think everybody who ever felt like an outcast should watch it i feel like if if high school was or if you consider those your glory days you're yeah. not gonna see anything yeah. that you like <laughs> You're not, gonna, you're, you're not gonna you're not yeah it's not gonna not gonna work for you it will be made fun of in this movie <laughs> yes yes absolutely but uh but she was you know when i met her she was i i expressed similar sentiments to her and she was uh couldn't be nicer uh she was just turned that day that i met her was her 40th birthday so she was turned 40 that day so wow. uh yeah very nice uh nice human being uh, i want to also bring up natalie um one thing that you've been doing, speaking of, we just, you know, Thor turned 40. Uh, we are considered, we are older than that. Um, I'll be 42 in, in, uh, in March. Uh, you're a couple years older than me, I think. Uh, um, you have, like, gone hardcore and just transformed, like, really impressive with you have to take into account guys at home, folks at home, because I, I have younger people who listen to this. When you heard, when you turn forty, it is not easy to get motivation to move your old, to move your bones. And Natalie, it, like joint pain and everything, like I have to hand it to you, like you have really done a good job with that, and you've kind of shown your journey online. What inspired you to kind of get in the shape that you're in right now, and? How did this all come about? Honestly, this this whole uh deal. yeah. Um, I uh, I'm always really careful with how I talk about this because I I don't think that anybody should. I don't think that anybody's body should be like a project, right? Or right. That anybody anyone else's body should be a goal. Yeah. Like I I definitely don't want um, you know, the fact that I like lost weight or that I've put on muscle or I I've, you know, changed my body or anything to be like, um, like a goal for anybody or, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, I, right, right, yeah. so I, I try to be careful in like how I talk about sort of the how and why, but the, the truth of the matter is I was just not like feeling good in a lot of ways in my body. I was, mm. Uh, I had just turned 40. I was not active at all. I thought I ate pretty healthy because I'm vegan and I cook a lot. But yeah. um, now that I have like more structured eating, I realize that I really wasn't, I wasn't like hitting all the, like all the marks um, nutritionally that I should have been for my age, right. especially like as we get older, it's really important that we have a a good amount of muscle to protect our aging brittle bones underneath yeah, right. our hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
And so, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I thought like, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to figure out, you know, what, how I can eat better. And I'm going to find something physical that I like. Cause I've tried a lot of things. I, I thought like running sounds like a thing I'd like, cause you can do it alone. You can do it anywhere. Yeah. You don't need anything. You just need like shoes and headphones and you can do it. Right. And I just didn't like it. Like physically did not enjoy doing it. So I tried a lot of stuff. It just so happened that, um, I decided that I just wanted to try to like make a change in my life right as the pandemic hit. Yeah. So I was like at home and I had more time on my hands. And so I got to try a lot of things. I tried Pilates. I tried bar. I did like a ton of um, cardio. I bought a Peloton. Like I tried (laughs) everything and I got myself to a point where I lost like 40 pounds and I thought I was doing great. And this person reached out to me on social media in March and her name's Belinda. And she was like, Hey, I'm a vegan fitness coach and nutritionist. And I never knew that you were like into fitness at all. Cause it's not something I, I was like sharing really. Um, but I, that I just happened to post a picture one day of me doing like um goblet squats with my dogs in my arms right and she was like I didn't know that you were a gym person like if you're ever looking for a coach like I'd love to work with you um and I had not considered working with a coach at all uh because I'm pretty stubborn I don't like anybody to tell me what to do and um but I thought like I've gotten this far on my own I wonder what else I could do so I started working with her right away um, you know, we do like a baseline week and she, you know, I'd send her like everything I ate, all my activities, like you really just expose like your life to this person. Yeah. And, um, you know, she was like, I was in like a, like a pretty long-term calorie deficit. Uh, and I was not eating very much. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I was just doing cardio. I was doing like 45 minutes of cardio and maybe like 15 minutes of strength training. And so I'd gotten like skinny, but I wasn't really fit and I wasn't yeah. strong and it was like not really what I wanted. And so we spent months just getting me to a point where I was eating enough. Right. Um, like it took months to get from 1600 calories to 1800 to where it was like, okay, now you're, you're consuming enough food that you can start to build muscle. Yeah. And so that was like the hard part really was just like letting go of all the things I thought I knew about food and like letting someone else show me and teach me. And then once I got to that point, um, and I started like, I started seeing like the first bit of muscle like getting added on to my body like I just loved it like I loved how it looked I loved how it felt uh and it just became like a hobby that I totally love doing and so I've been working with her almost a year I put on two pounds of muscle last year which is like a lot for some of my my age yeah um yeah and I just like I love it and uh I I never set like any like aesthetic goals for myself. Like I'm never like, oh, I want to snatch my waist or I want to do this or that. It's always just like, I just want to keep enjoying it. And I want to keep like making gains in the gym. Like if I can, you know, I have like these little weights, like if I can add like a quarter pound to what I did last week, like that's a gain. Like I'm happy yeah. with that. So um yeah, it's just been really fun and I enjoy it. And I'm not I'm not diet dieting and I'm not like depriving myself of anything. I'm eating more than I've ever eaten in my life. Um, you're, bur- you're burning more. So you're more hungry. You're hungrier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and I'm, it's only going to keep going up. Like my coach is we're the, we're like the same height and the same weight. Yeah. She's a, she's a competitive bodybuilder. She competes in the bikini category. Mm. Um, she eats like 3000 calories a day. So you know, it's like, 
it's just, I'm just going to keep, it's just going to keep going. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I do have some, like, I definitely have some people that I really look up to with what they've been able to do. A lot of them are younger than me. So I have to be realistic about like what I can actually do at my age, but it's just been really fun. Um, I feel great. Like I, I had like so many issues before, like yeah. digestive issues, mm -hmm. Just because I wasn't eating, it wasn't planned at all. Like my right. meals sometimes be three hours apart, sometimes nine hours apart. Like, you know, sometimes it would be, you know, like a ton of like guardian and field roast and whatever products. And sometimes, it, you know, so it's like yeah. now that it's like a lot of the same stuff on a schedule, like I'm hitting certain macros, like it's just very organized for me and I really like it. Um, so I've just, I felt, it's been great. I felt great. Are you a coffee drinker? Yeah. So do you, what do you do to, um, I mean, a problem I have is I teach all day and then I go home and it's kind of a struggle to get to the gym. Uh, so, you know, I have to drink coffee late to get my ass up. Uh, do you have any like certain energy drinks pre-workouts or anything, or do you just drink coffee to get you? to get motivated um, or, or do you not do anything and you're just up and you do it? Yeah. I mean, I, I lucked out with my schedule, um, because I work from home. So yeah. I get up early and I get like, I get everybody out the door. And right. 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 So you I do it then. Right yeah. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Right, so perfect, I do yeah. it first. Um, a couple times, like once in a while I have to adjust, like yesterday I had to do something early. So I went to the gym after, yeah. Um, and it did, it did like throw everything off for me. So I get, I get how that, you know, like I'd already eaten three meals and a snack and like had coffee in the morning, worked yeah. all day and then got home and like went to the gym. And so like it, it, it is off. Um, there definitely are like a uh, pre-workout, um, you know, like mixes that you can get that have, yeah caffeine in them or have like a caffeine alternative in them if you just yeah. need a little bit of an energy boost. But one thing my coach always makes sure I do is um, make sure she always has me eat something high protein, like as soon as I'm done working out. So right after, yeah, to recover, yeah. even if it's just, you just have a bar or like something on you just to, um, cause that's like when you're building muscle and everything. Um, but yeah, I, I, my schedule made it a little easy on me, but yeah, I've never tried any of the, any of the drinks that have caffeine in them. I, I just drink like a, like a BCAA drink when I'm yeah. heading out. Right. Right. Well, if anybody at, uh, at home is watching this and wants to follow Natalie on her, uh, uh, buff journey, you can follow her at, I think it's, what is it? Lupo underscore Vagano or something. I think, right. What is uh, it? Dot, yeah. Oh, dot. Put dot dot Pagano. Yeah, I'll, I'll put all that shit in the description. So if you want to follow her and check out all all the uh, all the uh, all the gains and whatnot with the with the um gym tofu laundry and all that shit. So right. <laughs> but uh, and my coach is Italian. So okay, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, yeah. So we um, so we got to get out of here pretty soon. We're coming up on the hour, Natalie. But uh, I'd be remiss. Uh, to give a shout out to, you know, you're probably saying like, well, Rue, how did you even, how did you even discover Natalie in the first place? She made mention uh, of him earlier on, but a uh, shout out to Punk uh, because ha had he not promoted Bacon Destroy years ago, probably Natalie probably wouldn't have been be sitting here right now. So a uh, shout out to you, Punk. And I think it's admirable, honestly, because uh, I know you guys dated years ago that you can still be friends with people after the fact. And I don't know, some people don't understand that, that you can still be friends. Mm -hmm. if, if, if it doesn't end or awfully, uh, you can still be friends. We're way better with friends than yeah. we were a couple. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm I, friends with my exes too. So it's, 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 it is possible, ladies and gentlemen, people at home, mm -hmm. folks at home oh, yeah. watching do that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, so let me see if there's anything else I forgot to ask you. I think I got, I think I covered everything. I think we covered everything. Um, let me see. Oh, okay. Who is, okay. I got a good one here. He he might hate me for this, but um, all right. 
who is who is in twenty twenty three? Who is more punk rock? Is it Natalie Slater or her son Tino Slater? Oh boy! <laughs> uh, if you don't want, if he, if he, if he doesn't approve, if he doesn't approve of us talking, then I will do an alt edit on this. No, no, it's cool. Um, Tino doesn't care yeah. what anybody thinks. Yeah. He he's a lot more punk than me because I, yeah. you know, I care like I care what other people think. I, you know, um, definitely can't keep myself off social media. <laughs> he's not on it. He's not interested. Yeah. He's like, he does his own thing. He's been into what he's into since he was like three years old. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's a, he's definitely like a radical individual, like much more, much more of an of a individual than I am for sure. How, how, how old is he now? He'll be 17 in March. Oh my God. That is, that is, wow. It's crazy. Life mm -hmm. goes, life, life goes by. It's yeah, amazing. there's a lot of people who um have been follow, you know, following along with me since he was little. So yeah. it's like wild for people to see the very rare, rare photo of him and see that he's like six feet tall and has a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's always it's always uh shocking when you see that, you know. I got but uh before we get out of here, I want to plug uh something you just recently did. Uh, and sent out to people uh, the Grind for Life cancer zine. Tell us a little bit about that, and also tell us about why the post office sucks and they're the new DMV. Oh man, <laughs> I could. Oh, God. Post office. So this is um, your, this is the last rant of the night. So yeah, I could really just Kermit arms about that all night long. Um, yeah, the the zine that I put out is. Uh, so for a, a little more than 10 years, I've been fundraising for a nonprofit called Grind for Life. They are, right. um, they were founded by a skateboarder named Mike Rogers, who is a two-time cancer survivor. And what they do is um, they provide financial assistance to folks that have cancer and their families, primarily to cover expenses related to um travel uh but also other just kind of like things that come up um the the yeah. thing that you know if you've never had somebody close to you with cancer you might not think about like life doesn't stop you know you still have to pay your bills you still have to buy groceries yeah. there are there's a lot of driving sometimes there's a lot of flying you have to take a lot of days off work um either as the person being treated or as their primary caregiver like if it's your husband like you're taking time off work you're driving him to the hospital you know you have a, now you have a single income and you still have to pay your mortgage and all these other things so they help out with expenses like that um that are not like super sexy but that are really yeah. important and um, additionally, they put on like a lot of um, skate competitions and uh, things like that, just kind of community building stuff. And it's like a great way to um, just get the message out there that nobody going through this is going through it alone. And there's like a whole community of people out there who care and, and want to help. So I first found out about them because they helped a friend of mine who had cancer when he decided to... Um, stop getting treated and basically go spend the rest of his days at his parents' house. He had to move from Chicago to Seattle yeah. and they helped pay for that. Um, so after he passed away, his friends had a fundraiser. Part of the proceeds went to Grand for Life because they'd helped him. And that's when I first heard about what they did and it, it just really touched me. So I've been fundraising for them. I used to always just do like a birthday fundraiser. It was like pretty straight, like, hey, it's my birthday. Donate to Grand for Life right. type thing. And right. um, this last this last year, I just thought like it'd be fun to do something that all the people who donate, because I've raised like almost, I think now it's more than $25,000 over the years. Oh, wow. And all of that money is from my friends, my family, people that follow me on social media. And, yeah. you know, they all give it because they want to give it. But I thought this year would be fun if when you gave something that you had something to show for it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I wanted to put together a zine. I grew up reading zines. 
every hardcore show had a table of like where girls were selling like zines about you know, vegan food or, you know, interviews or whatever. So I've always loved them. I've never made one. I got a bunch of recipes uh, from like all my favorite chefs and restaurateurs. I interviewed some cool vegans. Um, people contributed artwork and it all came together in like an almost 60 page zine. And I actually wrote the check today and I ended up raising 20 a little over twenty three hundred dollars from zine sales awesome. and then on my birthday too i had just like a separate yeah um fundraiser and that raised a little more than two thousand dollars so like all in uh you know more than four thousand dollars this year and I'm, I'm just gonna keep doing it every year i don't know if i'm gonna keep doing the zine or if i'll think of something else but yeah. it was fun to work on yeah absolutely it's awesome um love it and uh folks at home if you're one of the people who bought one Despite the post office being shitty, you're going to get one. They're in the they're in the mail, right? They're in the mail. I think. Yeah, I think the, the post mail. office like really didn't want to mail these. Uh, <laughs> we went to three different post offices to mail them all. And, so funny. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's just Chicago or I know the post office is like really underfunded and everybody yeah. there's worked, but miserable. I don't know. Every like the first, literally the first window we walked up to, like she was just like. No, I'll do 10 of those. And we're like, this is 130. <laughs> She's like, no, I'll do 10. <laughs> eh, good idea. I guess I said, yeah, I think they're the new DMV, which is, you know, but it's all right. It's all right. We love you. Post. If you're, if you're watching us post office, we love you. Thanks for, thank you for everything you do. Yeah. We love you. We love you a lot. And but uh, we also love uh, Bacon Destroy. Natalie, thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. And uh, before we get out of here, uh, for folks at home who don't know where to find you online or anything else you got to plug, uh, where can they find you? And uh, yeah, just give the plug away. Plug away. Well, okay. now he stares at me. Sure. Uh, well, my website's BaconDestroy.com. I'm, I'm Bacon Destroy on Instagram. Um, if you're an old person like me, you might be on Facebook. I'm <laughs> facebook.com, uh, bacon destroy fans. And um, yeah, I think that's everywhere you can find me. I haven't done TikTok. I, I, I'm refusing to do TikTok. I'm not doing it. I have a TikTok <laughs> account just to like watch. Mess. Yeah. People look at, yeah. Stuff, <sighs> Yeah, I just lose my mind. But again, Natalie, thanks so much for coming on the show. This is this has been awesome. Great talk. Um, Thank you. You know, me. keep on keeping on, and uh, you're the best. Uh, your family's the best. Flapjack's the best. Lulu's the best. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so keep being the pride of Chicago, Natalie. All right. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Take it. Take it easy. All right. Bye. One, two, three, four, try. Without the dead